We saw Alabama and Georgia face off in the national championship. Cincinnati and Michigan also both qualified for the playoff, but at the end of the day, the two best teams were Bama and Georgia. Looking ahead to 2022, in my eyes, the best team in the country will be Ohio State. In today's video, I want to talk about why the Buckeyes will be nearly unstoppable next year, why they could be the best team in the country, and overall my thoughts on this season, their roster, and next season. But before we can get started, nearly 80% of you guys are not subscribed, and we're on the road to 100k, so quickly be sure to hit that subscribe button, smash that like button for the algorithm, and turn on post notifications so you never miss when I upload. Now, let's get started and talk about Ohio State football. So when you take a look at the 2021 season for the Buckeyes, going into it, they were the favorites to win the Big Ten, projected to make the playoff in a top five team. Well, how did it go? In week one, they beat Minnesota in a great game, and then in week two, they lost against Oregon. This was one of the biggest upsets of the year, and it put Ohio State behind the eight ball. They struggled for a little while against Tulsa, but they beat both them and Akron. After that, they went on the road to Rutgers and won that game easily as well. They killed Maryland at home and beat Indiana on the road before their next big test, which would come against number 20 Penn State. This game was in Columbus, so they had the upper hand, and while it was close in the second half, the Buckeyes pulled away and won 33-24. At this point, they were in the driver's seat to win the Big Ten East, but they had some difficult games to finish the year. The first one would come on the road against Nebraska, but behind C.J. Stroud's 405 passing yards and Jackson Smith and Jigba's 240 receiving yards, they narrowly defeated Nebraska 26-17. After that, they play against number 19, Purdue, and while the Boilermakers did get the best of them back in 2018, in their rematch, Ohio State really put it to them as they won 59-31, and the game was never close. Their final two games would be their biggest two tests of the year, as they would have number 7, Michigan State, at home, and would have to go on the road to number 5, Michigan. In the Michigan State game, it was over from the very beginning. C.J. Stroud threw for 432 yards. Chris Olave broke the all-time record for career receiving touchdowns, and overall, they stomped the number 7 Spartans 56-7. That game was embarrassing, but nothing would matter if they could not go on the road and beat Michigan. In perfect Big Ten snow-like conditions, the Wolverines and Buckeyes did go back and forth, but it always seemed Michigan had the momentum. While Stroud and the Buckeyes made enough big plays to stay in the game, at the end of the day, Jim Harbaugh and Michigan ended up winning the game 42-27, and Ohio State would miss the Big Ten Championship, the college football playoff, and they would lose to their arch rival. They finished with a 10-2 regular season record and would now go to the Rose Bowl. This is where the future of the team and the program was shown. They're matched up against number 11, Utah, and this game was one of the best bowl games I have ever watched. CJ Stroud and all the talents of the young receivers were on full display. Stroud ended up throwing for 573 yards and six touchdowns, while Jackson Smith and Jigba broke the all-time bowl record for receiving yards in a game with 15 receptions for 347 yards and three touchdowns. This was absolutely insane, but then add in the fact that Marvin Harrison Jr. also caught six passes for 71 yards and three touchdowns. As I said, Ohio State would end up winning 48 to 45, and this was one of the best Rose Bowls ever, and the look in both CJ Stroud and Jackson Smith and Jigba's eyes showed that Ohio State is gonna be a force next year, and I'm unbelievably excited for all those players. So, who do they have returning? Well, as we take a look at the quarterback spot, CJ Stroud will be a redshirt sophomore, and I think he is going to go nuts. He finished the 2021 season as a top five Heisman finalist as he threw for 4,433 yards and 44 touchdowns. Both of those statistics were top five, and he also had the top QBR in the nation with a rating of 91.6. The guy is insane, and he seems like he has a real chip on his shoulder to win football games. Behind him, you'll have Kyle McCord and incoming freshman Devin Brown. At the running back spot, we have a really fun player, and that is Travion Henderson. As a true freshman, Travion ran for 1,248 yards and 15 touchdowns as he was a freshman All-American and showed he was a force as both a runner and as a pass catcher. He's going to be dynamite in the backfield. Behind him, you have Mayan Williams, Marcus Crowley, Evan Pryor, and true freshman Dallin Hayden. While you will lose Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, they will retain their top receiver. Jackson Smith and Jigba finished with 96 receptions for 1,606 yards and 9 touchdowns. He will be back and will likely be the number one receiver in the country. He is one of my favorite players in the nation, and I am so pumped to see what him and Stroud are going to do next year. So who do they have behind him? 
Well, first of all, you're going to have four different receivers who have been in the program for a couple years now, and the first one I want to highlight is Marvin Harrison Jr. Yes, he is the son of the former Colts legend, and while Marvin didn't play a whole lot, he showed his potential in the bowl game. Besides him, you're also going to have Emeka Ibuka, who was a former five-star recruit, Julian Fleming, who was a former five-star recruit, and G. Scott Jr., who was also a former top 100 player. Besides them, you're also going to have Jaden Ballard, Caleb Burton, Caleb Brown, and Kyon Graves. Brian Hartline has done a tremendous job at the wide receiver spot, so no matter what, I think they're going to be spectacular. They did end up losing Jeremy Ruckert to the NFL, but I'm certain they will have another guy step in and take over. Finally, I want to talk about a couple players on the defensive side of the ball that I am unbelievably hyped for. Zach Harrison may finally put all the potential together. 2021 five-star Jack Sawyer should get an opportunity to start, and they will return one of the top tacklers in the nation in Ronnie Hickman. There are plenty of other guys I could talk about, but I know most people watching this are more focused on this offense, so why do I think they're going to be unstoppable? Let's talk about it. I have three reasons why, and the first one is going to be the opponents in the Big Ten East. I don't think Penn State is going to be anything spectacular next year, so they won't provide much of a test to the Buckeyes. Michigan State had their breakout year in 2021, but with Kenneth Walker gone, I'm not quite sure the Spartans are going to live up to the same hype they had this year, and we all know how the game in Columbus went, so I'm not really worried about Michigan State. Michigan is the one team I would be a little bit concerned about, but they're going to lose their two best defensive players and their two superstar running backs. Cade McNamara is a game manager in my eyes, and unless J.J. McCarthy comes out and becomes the starter, I don't think this Michigan team is honestly that dangerous, and we have no idea what is going on with Jim Harbaugh at the moment. So one, I think they're easily going to go through that Big Ten East schedule and come out with an undefeated record in conference play. Two, their actual schedule itself. Yes, they do play Notre Dame in week one, but that game is at home. Notre Dame is under a first-year head coach, and they will have to find a new starting quarterback and starting running back, so I see no reason why an experienced Ohio State team won't easily beat them. From there, they have their next four games at home, including a game against Wisconsin, which I think would be difficult if it was on the road, but they should take care of that game at home. In terms of their road games, they get Michigan State and Penn State on the road, but as I said earlier, I don't think either of those two teams will be as good as they were this year. And finally, they get Michigan at home, which I think they will win. The schedule lines up pretty nicely, and most of their big games are spread out, so there's plenty of time to figure it out. My final reason is just the three-headed monster they have. In my eyes, CJ Stroud is the Heisman favorite going into 2022, and I know Alabama fans will be upset, but with no bias, I would rather take CJ Stroud than Bryce Young on my team, and just the way he played in the Rose Bowl against Utah shows me the kind of tone he's going to play with next year. Trayvon Henderson is one of the top running backs in the country, and he can honestly emerge as a true Heisman contender next year. The same can be said for Jackson Smith and Jigba, who as I said earlier in the video, is likely going to be the number one receiver in the country, and if he puts up similar stats to this year, he will be absolutely unstoppable. That three-headed monster will not be stopped, and there is plenty of talent littered at every other position. I'm also extremely high on Ryan Day, and I think this is finally the year the Buckeyes are going to put it all together, and as of right now, they are my pick to win the 2023 National Championship. I could definitely be wrong though, and if you disagree with me, let me know who you think will win the title. Also give me your thoughts on this Ohio State team. Let me know a team I should talk about in my next video. And before you go, don't forget to smash that like button, subscribe, and check out all my other videos on the end screen. I hope to see you guys again soon, but until next time, peace.